it is a pleasure to introduce Debbie Borkovitz, a clinical professor of math and math education in the BU College of Arts and Sciences. Debbie's presentation is From Wheelock to BU, Perspectives on Grading and Gatekeeping in Math. Hi, uh, it's great to be here. Um, I am one of the faculty members who came over from Wheelock College in the merger about four years ago. I taught at Wheelock for 25 years before then. And these are some pictures of uh, my classes at Wheelock. Um, some of my classes at BU look really different, like in a huge lecture hall. Um, and, uh, but Wheelock came out of the kindergarten movement there was a long history of active learning there and also a history of alternative assessment. So that's what I used uh, most of my time at Wheelock. Um, next slide, please. So in um, coming to BU, I was very um, definitely going to continue using alternative assessments. And I feel like uh, being in these radically different contexts has really sharpened my thinking. So like Marie, I'm going to kind of give a more big picture overview of some things. Um, so uh, five lenses that I look at assessment systems with. Um, so the first one, and you can click it. Yeah. Oh, very good. Thank you. Um, the first one is motivation. So, you know, BU students, wow, BU students really care about their grades. Um, and I think it can be kind of reflexive here for faculty to use grades as uh, motivation slash coercion because it works so well here. Now, at Wheelock, I had a lot of students who I had never gotten good grades. It's, it's honestly a diversity that I miss. So that just didn't work there. So we had to think more about who are the students? What are they good at? What do they care about? And to try to align the assessment so that it could tap into the intrinsic motivation that was there. Um, second lens is about measurement. Um, and this, this was really helpful to me to sort out. Now, if you look at a math class description at BU, typically it's a list of topics. And what we're trying to do in assessment is see, you know, how well do students understand the topics? And there are a lot of reasons why the traditional couple of midterms and a final isn't a valid measure. It can be measuring, uh, as Marie said, privilege, speed, um, test anxiety, memorization. It can measure a whole lot of other things. So sometimes alternative assessment is actually just trying to get a better measure, a more valid measure, not only so we can slap a letter on it at the end, but also um, formatively to help students with their metacognition and to help them learn the topics better. But then on the other hand, some of the things we're teaching, um, how to solve a problem you've never seen before, how to work together, et cetera, are just complex and difficult to measure. And when we try, it can actually interfere with the learning. So sometimes we're trying to just get measurement out of the way. And ungrading can actually um, accommodate both of these and sometimes both of them in the same class. Um, so the next, the next lens is uh, relationships. Uh, Again, standard syllabus communicates deep mistrust for students um, and a whole lot of uh, these are the things you're supposed to do, these are the things you're not supposed to do, and then the instructor polices, rewards, punishes. Um, a couple of years ago, I met Jesse Stommel, who's really well known in ungrading, and when he told me his, his teaching philosophy was start by trusting students, um, that had a really big effect on me, and I kind of add to that but don't expect them to start by trusting you. You have to earn that. And um, so one of the things I really think about in setting up an assessment system is how can I build trust? And you know, I have more power in the relationship, so it's on me to make the first move. Okay, and the next lens is boundaries. Now, alternative assessment can be a lot of work for the instructor. And, um, at Wheelock, we were, you know, I think at Wheelock, we, we really thought everything had to be about the students. So you end up saying these really convoluted things like, you can't turn in this paper late because when you have a job, you're not going to be allowed to be late. And at Wheelock, like all of our students already had jobs. 
Um, but I think part of where that comes from is just feeling, you know, for those of us who are into this kind of thing, we can just be thinking about the students all the time, but we also have to think about ourselves and our own boundaries in trying to do this. So this semester I've been telling my students, you know, you should learn how to meet deadlines, um, but I'm not here to teach you that. When I set this boundary, it's so you don't destroy my life. And I think that's a little bit more honest. Okay, and then the last one is, is just goals. Like, what are we doing here? Are we really trying to teach all the students? And, um, you know, we, we are at a school that is very explicitly trying to rise in the rankings. And barring a humongous tie, if we rise in the rankings, somebody else falls. And I think there's this zero sum mentality that um, can be across all of the classes. And it's really inappropriate in introductory classes, especially. Um, you know, are we here for everyone to learn? And, you know, having been at Wheelock for 25 years, Wheelock came out of kindergarten. And I think thinking about kindergarten can be helpful. Like kindergarten teachers are not really there necessarily to sort out who wins and, and that sort of thing. So I think as faculty, this is something that we often have some power to just reject gatekeeping and work towards inclusion. So thank you, I think, and yeah, thank you.